Good morning! It's Friday. I can see Yusuf here, Gabriel, Alexander. I think we've got Lily and Ibrahim who've done a task for me. They sent me a challenge. So Lily and Ibrahim, I owe you a challenge very soon. But good morning! Bo is here as well. I'm so excited. So my name is... You know my name. It's Bobby, Mr. Seagull, but you can call me Bobby. And I'm your online math teacher with Explore Learning. And we are all about fearless maths learners. So just in case you're new, welcome. So my name is Bobby, Mr. Seagull. I'm a school maths teacher. I'm the author of The Life-Changing Magic of Numbers about how numbers and maths have changed my life. And hopefully you're seeing through every week at Explore that we can help change your life through numbers as well. I'm also the presenter of the Monkman and Seagull Genius Adventures on BBC Two. So some of you, I think Hina said she or he or she's watched it. Um, it's on BBC Two. I'll show you more later on, but it's a BBC Two TV series, which is really fabulous and really fun, educational and informative, like we are at Explore, because we you have fun, but you also learn lots. So um, at Explore Learning, we are all about fearless learning, and we are excited to keep education going during these difficult times. And you can always go to explorelearning.co.uk on how to book a free online trial. And we love social media, don't we? We love social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. So if you use these, uh, Explore, we're Explore Tutors on Twitter and Explore Learning underscore official on Instagram. And myself, I'm at Bobby underscore Seagull on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well. I'll share the link later. I'm facebook.com forward slash, surprisingly, Bobby Seagull. I usually post a lot of my maths and my educational things there. And obviously I post my maths with Bobby um, classes there. Good morning, Lily. Good morning, Eloa. We have an Italian here. Good morning. Um, buongiorno, Eloa. Buongiorno. I can speak a little bit of Italian. Okay, so today's topic is all about geometry. And the feeling's strong. You can't go wrong with geometry. Sorry to Steps and uh, the Bee Gees. Uh, for this song. Geometry. I should have made the song up, it just came to my head now. All these, the visions, the visions of geometry. Okay, um, so we know the drill. It's going to be about 30 minutes of a class, about 30 minutes. Let me get my clock. Let me get my clock. Till about 10.30, if I can get this clock correct. I don't want to move for me for today, about 10.30ish. And then about a uh, few minutes of Q&A from parents, and I've got a couple of bits of question and A. Um, and then messages for me, for example, the TV show, my TED talk, where you can follow me for more information. Um, but I think we're ready to go, aren't we? We're ready to go because today is geometry. When the feeling's wrong, you know, you can't go wrong. It's geometry. It's geometry. Okay. You're wondering about my shirt. I'll tell you the shirt in a nice quick second. But before we do that, before we do that, um, let me uh, do our our maths rap. We always do this together, don't we? So remember, people always, I always say this, but I'm going to keep saying it because all of you here with Explore, we now are developing a really positive attitude for maths. When you go back to school, meet your friends in the future, you just tell them we're all fearless learners and we all believe that we can all do maths. There we go. Mayuri says, oh, geometry, oh, geometry, how lovely are your angles? There you go. Okay, let's do it. So remember, the Britain's Got Talent X. There we go. Come on, come on. Get with it. I'm right in the middle. One, two, three, go. Yes, I can do your maths. Yes, I can do your maths. Yes, I can do your maths. And that's the why. Two more times. Rewind. One, two, three, go. Yes, I can do your maths. Yes, I can do your maths. Yes, I can do your maths. Come on, Chris from Liverpool. The last time before the end. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do your maths. Yes. I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. There you go. Here is the time for the lesson. So, let's get the clacker board. Let's get the clacker board. We know what that means because we've got the lights on, got the cameras rolling, and Emily, it's Ritesha. It's time for action. Here we go. So, today's about geometry. Geometry. So, again, with maths, well, I'm multitasking. I'll, I'll move and talk at the same time. We always like recapping. 
What was that recapping? So what I said last time to people on Wednesday. So today's for Key Stage 3, 11 to 14, man week, but we always get people from previous sessions coming along. So I want to make sure that everyone learns the same things and builds on it. So what I'd said last time was geometry started about 2,300 years ago. 2,300 years ago. Um, it was formalized. A man called Euclid wrote a uh, textbook called The Elements. A bit like the periodic table, The Elements. And here he defined, if I can write it on the board, the elements, he defined geometry. He explained what a dot was. He explained that a line is the shortest distance between two points. And he built essentially what we now understand as modern geometry. And geometry now comes from two Greek words. And if you hear Monday and Wednesday, you know exactly what they mean. So you've got geo, which means the earth. Geo means the earth, and metria, measure, means measure. So you've got geo, earth, measure. And Euclid, in his book, The Elements, 2,300 years ago, created the first formal, people did geometry before, but the first formal book combining all that together. There you go. There is a cool fact to start. And geometry, we know, is all about shapes, sizes, positions, angles, and dimensions of things. So you're wondering, why am I wearing a Oh geometry, oh geometry, how lovely is your acute angle? Why am I wearing that? Let me show you a quick clip. Quick clip. If I can find it here. Here we go. Of the papers. Morning. Good, Good morning. morning. You got a nice t shirt. Oh, look, that's a festive yeah. math shirt. It's so a Friday. We had a Christmas jumper day at school. Okay. But so I've upped my game this year. <laughs> I mean, you bring, really have. Bring, bring people out in a cold sweat at this time in the morning. Cold no, no. There'll be positive joy. Yeah. Positive joy. <laughs> it's right. just that pie sign. It's making okay, okay. flashbacks. <laughs> um, so you're going to. So. So. Cledwin is saying we learn history in a maths lesson. I'll tell you what, it shows you, Cledwin, that maths is connected. Sometimes people think, oh, you learn calculations, you learn fractions, maybe you learn percentages, and you only learn in a maths class. But the reality is, maths exists within the world. You see maths when you're doing geography and you're looking at pie charts, looking at world populations. You see maths if you're an engineer and you're building bridges. You see maths if you're a historian and you're looking at dates. You might look at casualties in a battle. Numbers and maths appear everywhere. So maths doesn't just occur, even again in Explore, we've got our maths lessons, but it occurs everywhere in the world. So linking learning is incredibly important, but linking it. Okay, so we're gonna recap some key terminology because today's lesson is gonna be fun. You got some games, you got some games with Mr. Seagull. We've got a detective joining you today. I've heard that he likes asking difficult questions about geometry. So he's going to join you very soon. Before he joins us, let's um, let's look at some let's look at some maths. So, um, some of the key words that we need to know are two D and three D. Again, just a quick recap. So this is like a Mr. Seagull. It's a recap time. Time for a recap. So this should be things two D and three D. And we know two D, two dimensions, flat like a flat. A flat square. 3D is three dimensional. So as an object has a length, almost like a height, a width, and a depth. So it exists in 3D in actual space. So we can hold it. Where's it? Yeah, there you go. A cube. Three dimensions. And the other words that we should be aware of are what we covered towards the end of last lesson. You're not playing Scrabble. I know you're getting excited thinking, Mr. Seagull, are we going to be playing Scrabble today? No, no, no. Not a scabble today, maybe another time. But this here is an example of what type of shape is this? Emily, this is a cuboid, a cuboid. And on this cuboid, we can use it to define the key things. So here we have, it has one, two, three, four, five, six faces. So you've got faces. We, learnt, we looked at that this week, faces. It also has Edges, Detective C. We don't know. Someone's asking, who's it going to be? We don't know. We're going to have to wait to see the detective. He will emerge very soon. So you've got the edges here. The edges. 
And then, if you spoke to a non-mathematician, they would say, they're the corners. But what do we say instead of corners? There's a fancy word. Can we know this now? Beginning with V. V, it is. Give me a shout out. Vertices. Well done. Vertices. I think Lily and Ibrahim, you got the right. Vertices. Vertices. Good. Well done, Mita. So the vertices, they're the corners. Um, and then we have lots of 3D shapes. We have cubes. We have cuboids. We have spheres. Do I have one here? Do I have one here? Um, this almost, almost is a cylinder. A cylinder. Um, we've got pyramids, triangle-based pyramids, square-based, lots of 3D shapes. So, let's just look at, we looked at, um, we looked at one of these, we looked at a scrabble ball, we looked at all the dimensions. So we said how many corners were there? Eight, eight corners. How many edges were there? One, two, three, four there. Four there. So was it four there? Four there. And then there's four more left that we haven't done. There's 12 edges. And then faces, we said six. So on this, we said there were, um, we said there were eight vertices. We said, how many faces did we say? We said six faces. And we said, how many edges? We said 12 edges. And if we get time today, I'm going to show you an amazing formula by a man called Euler on how this works. Well, we've got Lin says a hexagonal prism. Exactly, that works. Uh, Lin said this, a hexagonal prism is a hexagon and then it's a prism means it's the same face all the way through the length of the object. So the way I think of it is, it's almost like a, um, a block of cheese. If you sliced it in any way, it would be the same size shape. Well done. So I'll come to that. Uh, Debjani saying, how do you calculate the number of edges? We, we just count them. We just count them, literally. One, two, three, four, five, six. You count them all. You just have to count them. Okay. Um, before we go into bringing in our guest appearance, we're going to bring in our guest. Should we bring in our guest now? We're bringing our guest. Um, oh, I want to make a mathematical comparison between two objects. So objects, they can be called a cube, a cuboid, but they don't have to be the same size. One example is, you've got here a humble doorstop. A humble doorstop. Does its job very well. Sometimes you get annoyed at it. Annoyed at it. But this is what you can almost call a triangle prism, a triangular prism. And I'll tell you why that is. Because if you look at this, if you look at this, come look, it's a doorstop, it's not very clean. So the doorstop looks a bit like this. Can you see there's a triangle there? And then it's the same depth all the way through. Depth meaning, can you see? Yeah, forget the whole there. It, it goes a bit like a wedge. And then there'd almost be a line that you could see. If you could draw, if I had Superman X-ray vision, it looks like that. And then if you look at this, did you know that Mr. Bobby Seagull here, I won Celebrity Mastermind on England at World Cup. So I won Celebrity Mastermind last month and I got this trophy. Have a look. Lovely little trophy. You like it? You like it? Uh, so it's my pride and joy. Although I'm worried it could drop one day and shatter. You saw that I'm a bit clumsy. A few weeks ago, I dropped my father's grandfather clock. Luckily, he fixed it. But, um, so my doorstop, um, Lily says, yes, Lily said this looks like my mastermind trophy. So this here, my mastermind trophy, is a triangular prism. So these are, Later, we'll look at something called enlargement. This is almost like an enlarged version of that. The same, again, it's amazing. In mathematics, we see a doorstop and a mastermind trophy. Unrelated, and yet maths unites them. Maths unites lots of things. Okay, I'm going to put this back because I can't drop this. This would be really embarrassing, smashing it into smithereens. Doorstop, I don't mind. Okay, here, it's time for... It's time for our game. Time to bring on... I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get him. Um, he's gonna, he's, oh, we're gonna try and hide and bring him board. Hello, hello, Mister. Um, well, well, you can't see him. You can't. You don't see me. You don't see me. You don't see me. Okay. So uh, it's time for a game. We're gonna get on board our our detective. On our detective is all about today trying to help you um, work out three D shapes. Work out three D shapes. So he is about to emerge. Do you want to see the detective? Come on. 
Come on, do you want to see the detective? Okay, the detective is about to emerge. All right, how you doing? Where's your teacher gone? Where's he gone? Where has he gone? Mr. Seagull, you here? You here, Mr. Seagull? Well, anyway, I'm the detective. I'm the detective. Dun, dun, dun. And my job is to help you play a game. The game is Guess Who Shapes Special. I'm going to put my pipe down. It's not good for my lungs. I'm going to put it down. And I've got all my questions in here because I know it, yeah? It's not. Someone's saying it's Bobby. This isn't Bobby. He's gone. He's gone. He's coming back when I tell him to. I'm the detective. Okay. So here is your here are your riddles. I'm gonna give you some options. Bobby said that you like options, yeah? You like options. But let me get them for you. Let me get Few of you still think it's Bobby. This is not Bobby. Does he have this voice? Does he have this jacket? No, he does not. You need to trust the detective here. So, the detective's game is called Guess Who Shapes Special. So I'm gonna put it down. Guess who shapes special? Guess who? Shape special. The detective is in the house. The detective. Guess who? Okay, he's gonna give you a few options. He's gonna say to you square. He's gonna say it could be a cube. He's gonna say it could be a cylinder. He's gonna say it could be, it could be a cuboid. He's gonna say it could be a sphere. He's gonna say it could be a cone. But the detective also says it could be other. Someone is saying the detective's got the same shirt as Mr. Seagull. I'll tell you why. I saw Mr. Seagull on BBC wearing this geometry shirt and I thought I want that shirt too, okay? He doesn't own the shirt. He doesn't own it. Other. So here are your options. Here are your options. Okay, let's get going. The detective. Let me open up my briefcase, read out the first question for you. I'm gonna open it up. Okay, the first question here is, I am a 2D shape. I have four sides. I have four equal vertices. I have four sides, all the same length. What shape am I? Come on. The detective, Lily's saying the detective is aggressive. That's because I've got to solve maths crime. People making maths mistakes. I need you to get maths correct. That's why. Okay. I am a 2D shape. I have four sides. I have four equal vertices. I have four sides, all the same length. What is it? What is it? Liam, Meter, John, Lily, and Charlene. They reckon it's a square. The detective's just consulting. The detective's gonna check on the phone. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. The detective says, Mayuri, you are correct. You are correct on the first one. We've got three more to go. And the detective will leave you in peace. Or maybe you won't, because he likes detecting maths. Okay. What else the detective? The second one. I am a 3D shape. Question two. I am a 3D shape. I have no flat faces. I have no straight edges. I have just one curved face. So the detective is telling you, what is this? I am a 3D shape. I have no flat faces. I have no straight edges. I have just one curved face. What am I? What shape am I? Hina's got an idea. The detective needs an answer. Agnishka, Debjani and Sanja, and Lily and Liam again. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call in the answer. They're telling me it's a sphere. They're telling me it's a sphere, are they right? Cor, Karen, Enrico, you are correct. You've got two correct, you've got two more to go for the detective. Emily, well done. Okay, this one here. I am a 3D shape. I have five flat 
faces. I have five vertices. Four of my faces are triangles and one is a square. I'm going to make this your last one. It's a tricky one. So I am a 3D shape. I have five flat faces. I have five vertices. Four of my faces are triangles and one is a square. The detective thinks no one's going to get this one. Oh, people are going for what they're thinking. What are they thinking? No, no one's going for square. No one's going for cube. People are going for other. I can see other. Other looks like it's a good shout. John Jeffries is giving me a good idea. I'm going to call it in. I'm going to call it in. I'm going to call it in. Uh, they're telling me it's a it's other. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm being told others correct. And then a couple of people, Harry and Dougal, are saying it's square. Is it square? A square-based pyramid. Karen says that as well. Yes, you are correct. The detective is satisfied that you have solved Guess Who, the shape special. You're lucky. The detective today was in a good mood. He could have given you four or five questions. We're going to say goodbye to the detective. Thank you all. Listen to your teacher, yeah? Listen to Mr. Seagull. Listen to Explore Learning because they are all about fearless learners. And I want you to not be afraid of numbers. Okay, say goodbye to the detective. Say goodbye. I think your math skills are smoking today. Goodbye to the deck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Mr. Seagull back, okay? Well done, well done. Thank, thank you, detective. How were they? Were they really good? Yes, they were very good. They were really on form. Um, you need to make sure that they, they know what a square-based pyramid is. Thank you, detective. I'm gonna go back to my students now. So are you all good? Okay, uh, thank you, detective. Thank you, detective. Lo lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. See you later. He's gone. Was he okay? I heard that he had a similar outfit to me. He's a copycat, that detective. I'm always telling him, don't steal my style. I've got a style. It's unique. I wear a t-shirt. I'm smart. And this guy here, you've got to watch him. He's a bit sneaky. He's a bit sneaky, but thank you, detective. We may see you again. I know. I was a bit scared as well, uh, Lily. Um, you don't want to mess with him. He doesn't like maths and mistakes. I'm more forgiving. He doesn't really like it. But anyway, so back to Bobby. And I'm going to tell the detective to stop smoking. It's not good for him. It's a, it's a bad habit he picked up when he was in detective school. Okay, I need some water because I was a bit, I was, I was worried I wasn't going to get back in the lesson. Okay, Bob, let's get going. So for the last part of the lesson, I may be running out of time for Euler's formula. So I may have to post that on my Facebook page for you, facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. But I'm gonna look at geometry and I wanna connect. Who likes, what's the thing with eight legs? Eight legs, come on, what is eight legs? Eight legs, eight legs, eight legs. What has eight legs? Could be an octopus, but it's a, a spider. Who likes spiders? Oh, I don't like, it's called arachnophobia. I definitely don't like spiders. I don't like spiders, but Spiders are connected to the next part of the topic. Not Spider-Man, actual spider. So, I'll tell you the story. About 400 years ago, there was a man, French guy. He was having a nap, he was sleeping. And then when he saw up in his roof, on the ceiling, he was terrified. He was like, mon dieu, il y a un spider. He saw a spider. And then he saw the spider, making a web on his ceiling. And what he thought was, as you do, how can I describe the way the spider moves? I can't just say a little bit left, a little bit right. Can I use maths and numbers? And he came up with something that you might recognize. Like Blue Peter, I've got a little grid here. Can you see this here? This is something that you might have seen in school. You might have seen in school. So this is called, a coordinate grid and you've probably seen that do you like my uh, blue peter style here's what i did so let me draw the axes a bit bit more clearly so you can see so that middle bit there that's the y-axis and then this bit here i made it really thick it normally wouldn't be thick it would be normally it would normally be the same length that's the x-axis so he saw this and you know what this man's name was descartes descartes 
Descartes. René Descartes. And actually, there's a phrase that he said. I think Descartes. Descartes. He said, I think, therefore I am. I think, therefore I am. So when we see coordinates in school, there's actually a fancy word for it at university. And they call it Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian. Cartesian. Cartesian coordinates. And can you see Cartesian comes from Descartes? So all because of that spider. I think it should be called spider coordinates because that spider came up, inspired Descartes. So he came up with this system where you can describe the flat 2D position of anything using coordinates. And again, we know from school that you would have seen that the, anything on, the, on this plane is called the horizontal. That's called the X, the X axis. And the tall part, the, the vertical rather, is called the Y, the Y axis, the Y axis. And again, this is a topic in school normally I'd spend lessons and lessons on. But I'm just giving you a quick snapshot. So Descartes, when he saw the spider, he said, I can describe the spider's position by just using a grid. So if it was there in the middle, I'd call it zero, zero. If it moved along to here, let's say there, I'd call it one, zero, because it's moved one along the X bit and it didn't move up there, one, zero. And again, this is something that you could probably spend more time. There's a game Battle Chips. And, and honestly, I'd spend probably an hour or two explaining this for the first time. But just to give you a snapshot of what it is. Because the thing that I wanted to show you for the last five minutes is that we've got this coordinate grid, but there's something, I want to give you a snapshot of what coordinates can be used for. Who likes Transformers? Who likes Transformers? I do. I am Transformer. My name is Cartesia. I am here to move. Um, I can move. My name is Cartesia. I am from the Transformers. Transformers. We've got something called transformations. And in maths, there are four of them, but three we'll have a brief look at today. One is called uh, translation. And I'll write them for you. I'll write them for you. If you've got a piece of paper, write them down. Again, some of you who are in later secondary school to see, if you're in primary, maybe just a bit. So it's a, it's a tricky topic. One is called, they're all transformations. Transformations, transformations. Um, one is called translation. And it's not like French to English. Translation. And the other one is called rotation. You can probably guess what that is. And another one is called, if you can see here, reflection. There is another one called enlargement, uh, but then that's for another time, another time. So these here, translation, translation, what is translation, Cartesia? See what translation is, let's get my Rubik's Cube. Translation is, the shape is exactly the same. So imagine this was here. Translation is where you move the shape, you move the shape. So you could say, move it three squares to the right. And then in maths we'd write it as three with a zero, three comma zero. But you can say, move the shape, three up and that will be zero along this way and three up that way so we can move it translate it so translation is where the shape so if it goes backwards you could say it's minus three and then minus two or you could say from there uh let's say one along and two up so you always do the x bit first and then someone's saying i can't act like a transformer i can i can look Transformer, translation, move the object two to the right, move the object one. There you go, I can do translation. Okay, the other one is rotation, and that one's trickier on a board. The rotation is when you turn an object, rotate object, so you can rotate it. So imagine we've got object there, we can, if you had a bit of tracing paper, we've seen that in school, you have a bit of tracing paper and you, tr you rotate it round. So we can move it round, you can move it, anti-clockwise, or you can move it clockwise. So that's rotation. And the last one that I said I'd talk about is re reflection. I can reflect myself from here to here. You can reflect yourself. To reflect, you need a line of reflection. So imagine, imagine here, this object here. Can you see that? 
If I said reflect it in the y axis, you'd look at that and you'd say it's got to be almost like a mirror line. It's got to go all the way there. Can you see that? But also, I can reflect it in the x axis. Reflect in the x axis. You can go down there. So, reflection. So, we've got three of these basic ones we've got translation, rotation, and reflection. And I just wanted to give you a snapshot because this topic goes quite far. And students, even at GCSE, they'll have translation, rotation, reflection, and enlargement where objects, this object here, will get larger. So, they're the four ones. And at least today, you've seen. You've seen what they look like, and you can all understand the basics of transformations. Thank you. So it's amazing. So next time someone sees a spider, you can tell them, I can tell you a story about a spider and the transformers. Who ever thought that? A spider, someone sees a spider, a man called Descartes, in his sleep, and then he creates coordinate geometry, what we see now. And then because of that, we have transformations, which are about transformers. Amazing. Amazing. I'm really excited. Okay. Do we have time? Do we have time for something? Yes, I think just about. Let's just squeeze it in. Let's squeeze it in. So, what I wanted to show you was that formula. That formula. It's going to be a really quick. It's going to be, it's going to be difficult. So, if you're in year four, year five, you're going to have to get your brains really switched on. And you can pause this back as well. So, this is the really advanced topic for this week. So, we've seen different objects. We've seen this, we've seen cuboids, we've seen spheres, lots of different objects, 3D objects. And there was a man in uh, Greece, about 400 BC. Let me turn this back around. 400 BC. And his name was Plato. His name was Plato. Uh, like a plate. Oh no, did I snap my, uh, I hope I didn't, oh god, I think I snapped the thing. I keep breaking stuff. So his name is Plato. And he said, in the universe, in the whole universe, there are only five objects that, are, he always called them perfect objects, where he said, each face is the same regular polygon. So, you know, polygons, polygons are, polygons are, n-sided shape. So a shape with a number of sides. So it could be three sides, four sides, five sides. It's a new topic, a polygon. Any shape. A square is a polygon, a triangle is a polygon, a rectangle is a polygon. They're all polygons. And what he said is, there are only five shapes in the world where you have each face being the same regular polygon. Regular means uh, all the angles and sides are the same. And he said all, and the same number of, this is a bit tricky bit, the same number of polygons meet at each vertex. So if you look at this Rubik's Cube, can you see in this corner here, there's one square, two square, three square. So every corner has the same number of shapes at it, three. And he said there's only five of these shapes in the entire universe. Plato, Plato, let me show you this. If I bring this up here, and this will, this will take us onto our formula. So he said, these are the only five shapes. Can you believe that, boys and girls? So whether you're in year four, year five, year, there are only five shapes. One is so called a tetrahedron. So remember, all shapes, each face is a regular polygon. So that one, each one is a triangle. And at each corner, can you see? It's almost like a four-sided dice. Each corner has three triangles connected. Then we've got the cube. Then we've got the octahedron, which is almost like two square pyramids on top of each other. Then we've got the dodecahedron, which is all hexagons. And the last one is an icosahedron. And these are all platonic solids because every, it's almost like, if you're trying to make a dice, these are all perfect dice. There would be equal chance of rolling. And it's amazing. There's only five of these shapes in the entire universe. Mathematicians have tried for hundreds of years, two, since 2400 years, but they can't make any more perfect shapes. So these are the perfect five platonic solids. And the cube is the most obvious one. I'm going to show you this. What's going on here? What's going on here? And I said to you, I'd explain something. Euler. I said I'd explain this man. Euler. Jen, we talked about, you can probably guess what the, the F, V and E are. I know this is, so when I'm talking about topics that stretch you and stretch you, this is doing that. This is something I would cover for like a couple of lessons. But again, I'd explore without being fearless. It's going to be difficult, 
But you can come back later, look it up on YouTube, check my Facebook for more information on this. But what he said was, Euler was another Swiss mathematician. He said, there's a formula that connects this. He said, if you add the number of faces and you add it to the number of vertices and you subtract the edges, you will get two for a perfect shape, for a perfect platonic. This is complicated. I'm not going to pretend it's not, but I want to stretch you before our final week of problem solving. So again, if you look at a cube, it has, a cube has, how many faces does it have? Let's go back. Let me go back to the main screen. The main screen. This is definitely, this is complicated. So you know what a cube. So he said, how many faces does a cube have? Can we see? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many corners does it have? How many corners? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight corners. And then how many edges does it have? That we've done before. Edges has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve edges. So six plus eight is fourteen. Minus twelve is two. So we know that this works. This is a platonic solid. So um, you can apply this formula for all the platonic solids. That's amazing. If you find another platonic solid, don't tell anyone. You've solved, you've, you've just unearthed a new bit of mathematics that doesn't exist. But there you go, there's only five that exist. So thank you, I, I was glad we got there because it's amazing how in maths, we've looked at basics, we looked at lines, we looked at squares. And now we moved on to, we've had the detective come in for a little game, but we moved on to platonic solids. And that's impressive, you looked at Euler's formula and these are things that are really stretching your mathematical mind. So thank you. So I think it's time for thoughts of Mr. Seagull. Don't you think so? I think so. I'm gonna have a glass of water, sip of water because I've been excited. So can you for me, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get calm for a bit. So can you take a deep breath in, hold it and breathe out. Take a deep breath in, hold it and breathe out. One more, take a deep breath in, hold it and breathe out. Okay, so. Today's thoughts of Mr. Siegel actually comes from a very special man, a very special man. So after I won uh, Celebrity Mastermind, I won it on England at World Cups. Um, the Football Association invited me to take part in a quiz against Gareth Southgate, the England manager, the England manager. And you know when I wear waistcoats often for lessons, it's because I was inspired by him. And Gareth Southgate is an inspirational man. And I asked him a question. I'm going to play this clip for you. And that's going to form our thoughts of Mr. Seagull for today. So have a look. You're going to love this. Can I, can I ask first? Bobby's going to go first. Oh, Bobby. So actually, Gareth, in, in school when I teach, I used to wear a jacket and tie. But after I saw you inspiring the nation, actually in school, I normally wear a waistcoat and tie. <laughs> I call myself Gareth Seagull. Um, what would you tell children about trying to be their, the best that they can be and inspire them? There's a lot of children sometimes in school, whether it's maths or English, they often sort of cap their capability and say, oh, Mr. Seagull, that, that's a limit of my potential. But you are a lot about actually with hard work, effort, training and mindset, you can be the best you can possibly be. What would you say to young children, whether they want to be footballers or yeah. academics or anything in life they want to be? Well, it's, uh, I think you've, you've answered some of it in the question really Bobby in that um, you, there's no limit to what's possible for people and very often we put a limit on ourselves so and I guess if I think back to things like maths that I wasn't particularly great at um, but you've got to just try and not focus on where you are compared to other people but where you are and how you can improve yourself so you're, you're, you're if you want competing against yourself and just constantly trying to improve because if you're trying to compare yourself with other kids who are really good at a subject, then that can be quite dispiriting, can't it? So um, I, I think probably make, making sure that you're the best version of yourself that can be would be my advice. So thank you, Mr. Gareth Southgate. That's an amazing guest. So Gareth Southgate was essentially saying, don't compare yourself to others. I always tell people, do the best that you can. Be fearless. If someone else, because you're fearless, still does better than you, that's not an issue. The issue is be the best you can be. And that's why I always tell people, aim for your personal best. So thank you, England manager, Gareth Southgate. So I had a question today from a parent saying, what made you want to start teaching? 
It's a great question because actually before I was a teacher and your adults and carers might know, I used to work in a bank. So I used to be something called a stock market trader at a bank called Lehman Brothers. And then I was a trader at a bank called Memora, a Japanese bank. And then I was a chartered accountant at PwC. So I used to work with numbers all the time. But the reason I went into maths teaching is because I know that so many people often say to me, oh, but Bobby, I can't do maths. I can't do maths. And I'm like, no, you can. If you work hard, it's difficult, but you can get there. And that's why I became a teacher, because I think all of us can do maths. All of us can be fearless. Like Lula says, be the best you can be. And again, if you go to my uh, uh, my YouTube or my te- look up Bobby Seagull TED Talk, I'd love for you to watch it and tell me your feedback. Do you think based on that, all of us are mathematicians? And clearly you can say, that is my view. All of us can be mathematicians. So have a look, Bobby Seagull TED Talk. Okay, um, and I always share this. Um, if you go to facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull, and I'll quickly paste it here, um, you can, well, there we go. Uh, you can find, uh, I'll put it, I'll pin it for a couple of minutes. You can find uh, all my um, all my maths work. And often I do other things as well. For example, you can tell with maths, I try and connect to the world, whether it's geography or history or science. So I do lessons every Tuesday and Thursday at 10.45. Again, I look at things like the Aztecs, Brazil, Um, But crazy stuff, really fun stuff, but it's trying to show you how um, learning is fun. Maths is for me. Maths is the number one thing, but other subjects are really cool. So again, go to facebook.com and follow me for education updates. I post my maths puzzles there with Explore, uh, other things related to maths. So please do give me a follow. So we've got a couple more things before we finish up. Um, One is uh, on Saturday at six o'clock now, the time's changed at six o'clock. Again, I post on my Facebook, I've got a family quiz. A lot of Explore learners come along. Um, we've got a primary school round, some maths questions. We have a pictures round, a music round. Sherrod, where I act, where I do acting out of films. So please come along every Saturday, usually 5 or 6 p.m. Times change, but I post details on my uh, Facebook site. And it's all for the NHS. Um, any other messages for you? So before I do a wrap up of all the, the final Explore messages, um, I've got Monkman and Seagull. So a few of you said you've watched this on television. So I want to show you, this is on Mondays at nine o'clock and it's also on BBC iPlayer. Um, and the whole town family here, and they love my quizzes. So let me show you a clip from uh, Monday's episode. In this 50 year period, Monkman and Seagull have witnessed a transformation in the lives of ordinary Britons. They discovered how we supersized our economy by conquering the oceans and pioneering a mechanized factory system. To cap it all, they've charted the development of steam power from its pioneering early days to the birth of the railways. The Industrial Revolution sort of set off a process of continual discovery. Somebody described it as a wave of gadgets. And it's almost like, yeah, like like a snowball. Once it starts moving, it just makes it easier to progress. I feel that like we're already astonished at what we've seen in this half century. I'm just curious to see what they do with this the first half of the 19th century. How can they improve on it even more? Onwards to the 19th century. Let's do it. Next time. There it is. There's the rocket. Woo! So there, there, there you go, boys and girls. There you go. So um, if... So you'd have seen, I wear my cool glasses there. Cool glasses, and also I wear my um, I wear my waistcoat. And now you know why I wear the waistcoat because I'm so inspired. Hi Heidi, I'm so inspired by Gareth Southgate and how much he's all about. Gareth is all about being a fearless learner because what you find about Gareth Southgate when he's England manager. Before that, he missed the crucial penalty for England at a European Championship, and England lost. And you might think Gareth says I can't do penalties, but he came back. He was resilient. He was fearless. I think Gareth would have loved Explore Learning when he was a child. Explore Learning and their fearless mentality. So, um, before a few shout outs before the end. So again, Explore Learning, why I love them is because they're all about being fearless, trying things again and again and again. And if you've got explorelearning.co.uk, you can find out more information about a fee trial. And again, we've got our social media Explore tutors on Twitter, Explore Learning underscore official. And then for myself, I'm Bobby underscore Seagull on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, and Facebook. So again, I post all my information there, hashtag Maths with Bobby. And on Monday, nine o'clock is my second episode of my TV series, 
but you can find episode one on iPlayer. And honestly, you'll love it. You see my enthusiasm, how much I love maths and learning. It's all that for one hour. Thank you. Okay, so uh, a few goodbyes before we do our, you know, we're going to end up here. We're in stoppage time now. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you, Sifia. Thank you, Lula. Thank you, Ritesha. Um, thank you, Kledwin. Thank you, Heidi. Um, thank you, Alice. Um, thank you, Enrica, Raj. Thank you, the whole town family. Um, thank you, Eloa, who's half Brazilian, half Italian. And Lily and Ibrahim, I owe you an answer to one of your questions from last week. And I will respond on Twitter and Instagram to you. So thank you all so much. Um, Amir, thank you. And Bo, so you know what it's time for? I'm going to take this off because I'm going to, it's a bit hot. I'm, I thought it was going to be cooler today, but I'm still feeling a bit sticky now. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah. So let's go, Cledwin. There we go. Okay, so remember, people go this. Three, two, one, go. Yes, come on, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Two more times, Emily. Let's do that. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. One more time. And next week, we've got problem solving. And we're going to be World War II code breakers. It's going to be amazing. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. I'm Bobby Seagull. We're Explore Learning. We're about fearless learners. So next up, don't forget Saturday Family Quiz, 6 p.m. Check my Facebook for that. Then on Monday, 9 o'clock, I've got my TV series, Episode 2, and iPlayer. And we're back next week, Monday, Key Stage 1. Wednesday, Key Stage 2. And Friday, Key Stage 3. Maths with Bobby, Explore Learning. We love learning. We love maths. And we think we can all do maths. Thank you all. Thank you, Daniel. See you all very soon. See you maybe tomorrow for my quiz. Ta-ra. Bye-bye.